going on, everybody? What's happening? Be smooth. You are first. Man, what are you just waiting around? All right. So, what's up, Laybright? Uh, Laybright, uh, send me your phone number. I don't have your phone number. Um, if you're still interested, I talked to Bob that has a, he bought another truck. So, send me your phone number if you're interested. What's up, Dennis Richardson? What's going on? Cluster trucker? What's happening? So anyway, let's talk a little bit about the nuts and bolts of trucking. Or owner-operator, having your own authority, all that good stuff. Wayne Brown, what's happening? A little dark in here. Need to turn some lights on, but, you know, we'll just be in the dark. Yelling at the windshield, what's going on, RD? What's up? Blue Valley, Clyde, what's going on? Uh, there's a little misinformation out there about interstate authority running through different states, credentials you need in different states, and things like that. But, hey, hey, remember, what's up, Big Sam? Remember I told you all about the Dogecoin, D-O-G-E-C-O-I-N, or doggy coin because it's got that dog and it is a, a a playful thing about crypto right it was a start out as a joke i think we were trading at around five or six cents it went up to 45 cents fell back down in the 20s yesterday today it's back up to 31 i've been buying and selling it the whole time i've uh, been in and out of it today for i don't know 100 bucks or so i'm up another 100 bucks um on the coins I bought just earlier. And then I hold some. I got some held in a, in a wallet. So I day trade it and I hold it. So I'm up 90 bucks in just a few, few minutes on this other trade. Will I dump it at that? Probably. I'll probably dump it at that and then rebuy it because it's going to fall back down, right? It's going to go back down. Um, it was on a tear up to 31 since back down to 30.9 it was as low as 23 today or so so yes you can you can hold for the long run dream for that million but like the guys posting right they're posting on facebook the other day when it went to 40 something cents twenty thousand dollars fifty whatever right but now guess what Lost half its value, just like that. So the guys are buy and hold. What they could have done was, they could say, well, it's gone up quite a bit, Cardano. I got some of that. I have some of that, John. My, coin, my Coinbase account is pretty extensive on which ones. I got a lot of them. Uh... But I day trade this. It's up to 31.7 cents. But here's here's the thing. When it was at 45 at its height, it was down to 22 today or so, 23. That's half the value. So if you had, let's say, $40,000 you made and you didn't sell, now it's only worth 20000 If you'd have sold back down, you could have rebought. You could have rebought. And you could have took 20 grand, stick it in your pocket and invest the 20 back and have the same shares. So, just a little insight because, you know, what goes up must come down, yeah. And it has it several times. I mean, it's been up and down today like, you know, 50 times. You could have spent it out for a half a penny on it. Not even a half a penny, like, yeah, half a cent. It made lots of money. Because, for instance, I bought this one. It's up $79. Let's see when I, what I bought it for. About 3,500 coins just earlier. At, um, $29 and some change or so. And it's up over, it's almost 31. 
<sighs> you have polka dot. I don't know. Let me take a look, John. And we'll get to talking about trucking. Yeah, you just made 100 on it. Right, I'm up 75. I was a hunt by 100 when I started talking. And, of course, I'm down to 71 now um, on that. Because I tell everybody, you know, click on my Robinhood link. We all get shares of stock for free. You can day trade it. Um, you know, and if you want to hold it, go to, go to another site that has Dogecoin. You can put it in a wallet, take your profits, stick it over there. Buy coins, let them sit. If you want to you want to sit and let them hold all the time, hold them over there. Robinhood, you know, it's not real coins. You don't have real coins. You've got to go to Coinbase or somewhere like that to get real coins in the vault, in your wallet. This is shares of coins. It's not the real coin. Because it's, it's not a vault. It's not a wallet. Uh, you didn't miss nothing. Just because it might come all the way back down. We don't know, right? It might come all the way back down. Um, you didn't miss anything. Because if you got in now and, it's, and it went way up since, uh, you know, if it went way up to 5 or 10 or or $100 a coin, you didn't miss nothing. Yeah, you missed getting in at the $0.06 cent mark or $0.02 cent or $0.03. Cent, but just like any stock, you got to get in sometime or crypto or so forth. This... Who knows what it'll do? It's living on a, a, a ride of hype, right? That's what it's living on, but you might as well cash in on it. Well, let's see. What was it? Yeah, now I'm down to $69, $65, $63, because it's on a the 58. That's how far, how fast it drops. I was at 100 Just lost half the profit just talking on the show, but I'll just hold it until it goes back up. All right. So let's talk about Oregon. I heard a lot of information on Oregon. Wrong information. Um, so we'll talk about Oregon. It's ex People say it's expensive to uh, get an account with Oregon. So you don't have to buy you know, your temporary permits to drive through there. And you only get so many, so many on your fleet. Um, so just get an account. It's not that expensive. It's not that expensive. What's up, logistically disturbed? What's up, Eddie? It's not that expensive. Here's how it works. Hold on a minute. Got a loud phone call coming in. Uh, All right, so Oregon. If you're new to Oregon, there's only there's here's the way to do it. The least cost factor of doing it. You could it costs you two thousand dollars is what it is. You set up your account. They want two thousand dollars. They want you to file monthly, not quarterly, monthly. You got to give them two grand. That gives you one truck, two grand. They hold it. You file, you file it monthly. You pay your bill. And after a year or two years, whenever they decide they want to release your money back to you and let you, they know that you are solvent and you can pay your bills, there's no more deposit. Now, you could also do a bond. See, it's $2,000 one truck, every truck after that's $375. So, if you wanted to send two trucks into Oregon 
even if you had 15 or 20 or 30 trucks in the fleet, but you only had two guys that wanted to go through Oregon, you could just put the two trucks in there. That's $2,375 they'd want. Or you go ahead and get a $2,375 bond, which costs you about 100 bucks a year. So for 100 bucks a year, you do two trucks. If you had 10 trucks, you're going to need roughly $5,000 bond. It's not going to cost you much. Or you do what I do. You get a couple guys that want to go there. So you just had the two trucks, spend a hundred bucks for the year, do your monthly stuff. When one guy doesn't want to go there anymore and another guy does, you just delete his truck, go in, delete his truck off the rolls, you put the other truck on there. Now you only got two trucks. Go through Oregon. There you go. Simple way to do it. $100. For the bond for a few trucks. $5,000 bond, probably not much more than $100 bucks either. Maybe $120, $150, somewhere, who knows. Just depends on your credit and all this other good stuff. Yes, you have to file every month. Because that's what they require. Uh, new, new to their system is a monthly filing, and it's really easy. Just go on there. Even if you don't run any miles, you just quick check mark above all the trucks. Just check mark none of them ran the miles. Hit the button. Sign your name. Hit enter. Do the checkout. No money owed. You got your report done. Mm -hmm. So instead of you know. Buying that one-time deal through and all that garbage. Just go ahead and do it. Kentucky tax return. You do that quarterly. It's a valorum tax. It's for the miles you run through Kentucky. You still have to pay the IFTA on your IFTA side. You also have to file for mileage tax. Same thing with New York. Now, New York is tricky. Some people lose a lot of money because they don't understand New York. New York taxes you on all of the non-toll miles. So if you got a truck that ran 5,000 miles in New York and he ran 4,900 of them on the toll road and you just charge him for the 5,000, you're going to pay New York a lot of money if you don't know that, that the toll road is exempt from that fee that contractor would end up paying a lot of money when he, when he shouldn't. So, there's a lot of things you got to do when you don't want to do them. That's why there's a lot of work. See, getting your own authority looks easy. Looks easy on paper. There's a lot of moving parts. Big Mac can tell you there's a lot of moving parts. And if you don't use the software... To help you do this stuff, you're going to pay somebody. And if you pay these people that want, you know, like the JJ Kellers of the world and the uh, OIDAs of the world and all that, they're going to charge you an arm and a leg for it. For it. And you're going to get tons of emails of, you know, this is past due, that's past due, this and that. You want to go another headache in trucking? You want to get interstate authorities? That's a headache. Because you got to file every single year with everybody that you're doing business with in interstate states. Everybody has some type of filing, right? You're going to have to do your foreign corporation filings, uh, your annual filings, your biannual filings. It, it just depends on the state. Pay them money, right? You're going to pay them money. Um, some waive it if you're a UCR. Some don't. It just depends. It's a lot of stuff to. You know, that, that's why a lot of. That's why you see a lot of uh, owner operators. They have their own authority. One truck, two truck operations. They do interstate illegally, but they do it because they don't want to. You know, do all the paperwork. It's a headache. Same thing with beer. All right. You'll have brokers telling you, oh, you don't need a beer permit. I got guys run this all the time, no beer permit. 
You need a beer permit in a lot of states. Beer is still alcohol. It requires it. Some require it to even pick it up in the state. But, you know, individuals will do it. They'll haul it. If they get caught, they're rolling the dice. Personally, I won't roll the dice. Because it's not worth the authority. You do too much to get it. Now, we just had a, one of our drivers book a load, come across. I looked at it, sent him a message. You can't haul it. It was a beer load. Broker told him he could. Can't. Don't have the permit for that state or the state next to it. Therefore, no. We can haul it in a lot of states in this country, but certain ones, we don't have the permits yet for those states. So, can't haul it. Not going to take the chance. Because it's not worth the money. None of those loads pay the money to risk the authority. Or to sit there and have to have the freight transloaded off the trailer onto another trailer from another company that has the authority to haul it. Just think how much that would cost. So is the load really worth it? No. Water pays just as much as beer. Less headache. Don't have to build a bulkhead, you know. Uh, so that's some of the moving parts for authority. You got all different kinds of things. Make sure your driver files are up to date if you're working on that. Make sure you use a program, you know, like we use to keep track of it. It's a lot better than pen and paper. A lot of people like pen and paper. Why? Because it's free. Um, you don't get very far in business always trying to do it on the cheap side or free side. Have you ever heard the terminology you got to spend money to make money? That's true. You got to spend money to make money. And everybody over here working for like trucking, contracted on, they all know I'll spend the money to make the money. I'm not afraid to spend the money. Uh, what else we got? In the right, in the right Big Mac. He says every month the report sounds like it's not worth it. He's not going to go to Oregon. That's what he's telling you. Not worth it to him. He's not going to Oregon. Um, yes, they are nutritional. You could say you're not hauling nutrition. Right? You could say that. Well, I have lighting. It's up there. I mean, I could stick another light up here and make it brighter. Or I could do this. And that'll brighten it up for a minute, but then the camera's going to dim back down. You don't want to see me anyway, Big Rig CEO. Right? Right, James? You don't want to see me anyway. What's up, Cole? The best length of time to finance a truck's 45 to 65 range. Personally, three or four years. You can only depreciate the truck for three years. It's a three-year depreciation. Now, you do get a little on the fourth year. So you go four years. By the time you get it paid off, if you do the whole four years, you're out of depreciation. So you take the four years. Four years is where the depreciation's at. It's, it's three-year depreciation, but there's a little bit rolled into that fourth year. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. So if you want a lower payment, 48 months. You want a little higher payment, 36. Uh, you got a guy who's doing six or seven year financing. That's craziness. Because, you know, they buy a new truck. Oh man, my payment's low because they got a six year finance deal. Well, guess what? Almost three years of that. They're going to have no depreciation. Zero. But they'll still be making the $2,000, $2,200, $2,500 payments. You know, that's where they get in trouble. Is... They depreciate it in that three year, the fourth year they get a little bit. Let's say they got a brand new truck, 150 grand that fourth year, and let's say their payments are 2,800 a month. So they're, they're paying about you know just over 32,000 a year. So 
what happens is, let's say that fourth year they get 12,000 depreciation where they're paying 32, 33,000. So on that 21,000, that's total haul, that's all tax. There's no write off on that, it covers that. That's all tax. So then the fifth and sixth year, they're paying $33,000 or so in, in truck payments, but it's all tax. They can't, they can't take none of that and write it off. All that's tax money and it's going out the door. That's where they get in trouble. I think the boss is home. You want to say something to all the people? No. No? Um, what's up, MT Fuel Corp? What's happening? You just noticed I was live. Yeah, I got your text right here. MT Fuel Corp. Um, oh, now we're up $166 on that, on that amount that I bought. $162.09. Should we sell it or should we hold it? We'll just hold it. We'll hold it. I think it's going to go to, let's see, where is it at right now? Here's my prediction. Let me take a look at the chart. Okay, there's the chart. I think it's going to go to 33 cents. I think it's going to go to 33 cents before it has a pullback. It's pulling back a little now, but I think it'll it'll pop back up there. I think it's going to go to 33 before it pulls a pullback. But I, I do believe it's going to be back down in the 27, 28 cent range within the next hour, maybe two hours. Is a lease payment on a new truck less per month than a bank loan? Yes, it is less money than a bank loan. Uh, a full maintenance lease is less money than a bank loan. When I was doing them, it averaged on that $160,000 Volvo, somewhere in there, you know, and I had the APU put on, so that added more money. That added two fifty more to the bill. Um, but I was averaging around twenty seven hundred to twenty eight fifty a month. That's all in. Sometimes twenty six hundred, depending on the miles. But just say twenty seven hundred. Round it up twenty seven hundred in between twenty seven hundred a month. Everything covered hundred percent bumper to bumper. Everything oil changes everything. Everything is included. To finance that truck would have been 3200 3300 somewhere in there, a month. It's less money. At the end of the time, I could have bought it for somewhere around fifty grand, something like that. So it was less money. So if you take that less money, that three or four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, whatever your difference is, let's say it's five hundred a month difference. Over five years, you know, it's thirty grand. So you're out twenty more grand to buy it. Well, guess what? Take five years of maintenance on that truck. So you could buy it and you'd still be there, you know. On a lease, how many miles do they give? On a lease. That depends on what you negotiate. Um you can get a 100,000 mile deal, plus or minus 15%. So that means go 115,000 miles. No problem. They don't overcharge you at the end. So if you got a plus 15%, um, that means you could have 575,000 miles on that truck at the end of five years, turn it in, no extra charge. And then they do 150,000 miles, 120, depends. The more miles you ask for, the higher the payment, right? Because the higher the maintenance cost. They got it all figured in there. Um, so, I mean, it's no different than renting a trailer or anything else. It's just a tool to do the business. Guys get all caught up in a title. I got all kinds of titles in this filing cabinet over here. You want to see titles. Titles don't mean anything. Yeah, it means you own it. 
so what do you got? Five years, got a truck five, six hundred thousand miles on it. It's worth maybe a third of what you bought it for. You lost all that equity because no, these vehicles do not appreciate, they depreciate. They go down in value. And here's another thing that a lot of guys don't do right. Let's say that let's say they got a truck that's five years old. They paid it off. It's paid for. Or any truck. Any truck. And you, yes, the lease payments are 100 percent write-off. You are correct. It's hundred percent. Where you're that goes back to the guy paying the fourth and fifth year. His payments aren't written off. He read we've written everything else off beforehand. A lease payment like that is a level, it's a level field all the way across the board. You know what your taxes are every single year because you can count on that. That does not fluctuate, does not change. Your depreciation changes per year. A little bit the first year, a huge amount of the second year, about the same amount of the third year as the first year, and hardly nothing on the fourth year. Nothing on the fifth year. So it fluctuates. Lease payments, 100%, you know what it is, year after year. So, some guys, they want that paid off truck. They want to see that note, but here's the thing. Let's say they want to go buy another used truck. Let's say their truck is worth 30000 They go buy another truck. For You know, let's say they trade it in. Let's say they found another truck that, and they got a really, really good deal, forty grand. And it had way less miles because the market's down. Well, guess what? They can't write off that forty grand for that truck that they just got that they traded in because they have a thirty thousand dollar capital gain because that truck that they're trading in is worth zero on the tax roll. You write it down to nothing; it's worth nothing. You just got thirty grand. Oh, they're gonna they're gonna hit you good. They're gonna hit you good. Now you can say you're trading the equipment. So then, when you get this other truck at forty, you really should only write up ten thousand, not forty. But people write forty and they shovel it right there, and they hope that they, you know, got to do it right. You got to put in there that it's a capital gain. You just can't wash it out. Whenever you sell a piece of equipment. You have to put that on the tax return. What you sold that equipment and what you sold it for. And every piece of equipment is going to be a capital gain because you're going to sell it because you've already written the thing off. <sighs> Taxes get a lot of people in trouble. Can trucking office help keep you compliant? Yes. It has features in there um, that, you know, you can put in the driver's medical card expiration, uh, driver's license expiration, all that stuff. So it'll alert you the vehicle registrations, trailer registrations, and all this stuff. And it'll alert you when you come on. It'll have big red things going across the top saying, you know, uh, one or two drivers or medical cards are due, license due, registration are due, things like that. Um, so it can help you in that regards. Does it have a driver file program built in? No. What else we got? What else we got? I'm a very, well, you can still see me. You know, I'm like in the shadows. RD, you know what I'm saying? Here, I'll put a link up. I won't be on very long. We got a birthday party to go to. If you want to join in, you can go ahead and join in. There's the link. Like I said, I have a birthday party to go to here shortly. Um, so I won't be on very long. I decided to stop in here. That's going to be the new show. We're going to call it uh, trucking, the, you know, the nuts and bolts of trucking and have a different, you know, thing come across there and stuff like that. Got one of those um, new wallets. 
it's the metal, right? You can slide the slide your stuff in and out of it. It's pretty cool. It works. What's up, Nathaniel? Welcome. Welcome aboard. If you lease it for the first three years and buy it, can you write it off for them? Yes. So if you do the five-year lease, let's say, and let's say it has a $50,000 buyout at the end. Well, when you buy it for $50,000, you can now write that off for three years because you purchased the truck. So you can write it off. Um, is it standard practice to let Progressive have access to the LD? They claim to offer 5 to 18% yearly premium savings for safe driving discounts. I absolutely would not let that company have any access to any LD. Think about it, Cole. If they're going to give you 5 to 18% yearly premium savings, they're going to give you 20% or so savings if you pay all the money up at once. But a lot of guys can't do that. So what do you think they're going to do when... They see a lot of speeding because those ELDs, you know, every driver speeds. Every driver speeds on those ELDs. It's going to show them everything. What are they going to? What are you going to do when they say half your fleet? They say it has excess speeding. They're going. To, they can sit there right there and they can say, you know what? You're too high a risk. We're canceling your insurance. Then what do you do? You're out of business. No insurance, no business. I wouldn't let them have access to it because. Now, they could sit there and see all of what the company is doing when it comes to that. Buying and selling crypto at the same time. <laughs> oh, let's check that while you're saying it. Maybe I'll get rid of this piece I have right here. Oh, it's at 32. I'm close. And I say go up to like 33 cents. Is that 32? Uh, we're up 121 bucks on it right now on that. I'm going to go to 33. I think it's going to hit 33. It might have. I've been talking. It did hit it probably when I was talking. But see, it's flirting with the 32 again. Here, let's see if it'll focus in. There we go. See, it fell down a little bit. Yeah, so, you know, we use an ELD that has safety scores. It scores driver performance. Um, all of our guys are up in the, in the 90s, 99, 98, 100. And our safety director, he'll call them and he'll say, hey, you know, you got to watch this, you got to watch that. And our ELD also has where it can turn on uh like coaching so if you're following too close it can alert you you're you know you're getting too close it'll tell you it'll speak to you through your speakers or whatever or through the you know the app or whatever it'll tell you so it kind of give you an idea kind of give the driver an idea of what it looks at and maybe break some bad habits um you know, so they are helpful. Oh, uh, let's see here. What's happening? What's shaking? They are helpful. Hold on, I gotta kill my. Uh... Oh, let's see here. Yeah, you're on, Bob. MT Fuel Corp. Can you hear? I can hear you. Let me just kill this. How's that? Yeah, no you're good. How you be? So what's happening over there in, in Long Island? It's uh, 48 degrees, 48 to 51 degrees, partly cloudy. That's about it, uneventful. Cut the grass, fertilize today. Can you hear me? I'm going to put these on so we don't echo back in. Wait, maybe it's my fault. What do I got to do? Am I echoing? No, you're not. All right. 
Milloin on vaan. All right, how's that? Uh, sounds good to me, but I don't know how I sound out. No, if I'm, I, I think I turned my YouTube off. No, you sound good. All right, good. So, what are you looking at, leasing a truck? I don't know. You know, I'm, you know, I, I got stuck on the road a couple times. Well, a couple times. Not once with the truck. And then I did a decent amount of work uh, to it um, last year. And you're right. You know, what you were just saying, I just caught it. You know, there's, it's not as easy as just getting your authority. A lot, a lot of things, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of paperwork. There's a lot of compliance stuff. There's, I mean, just trying to negotiate a rate with an insurance company takes time, you know? And then, you know, I went out and I bought a truck cash. Um, and, uh, I had a good year with it the first year. And then the second year, um, you know, between COVID and, um, the repairs, I, I I essentially lost money with it last year, which it's it's okay. I have other sources of income, but I lost money, you know, in that second year. Well, Can you hear me? Yeah, oh, yeah, I got you. I just had to unmute my mic. All right. Hey, nice nice hallway there. Oh, over over there in the back. Yeah, that's my slider out to my deck. And then this is, this is my little office. Logistically disturbs us. Who has a decent full maintenance lease agreement? Well, Kenworth, Kenworth Peterbilt has one. Volvo has one. Freightliner has them. And then there's some leasing companies out there that have them. But you want to look out. You don't want to pay more than 2400 to 2,600 a month for the lease itself. Now everybody's gonna have a mileage part to that between six and eight cents a mile for every mile you run on top of the payment. Um, there are some leases out there like the Mac, I think they were advertising $1,980 a month just a little while ago, which is a really good deal. That's pretty cheap. For what, an anthem? Yeah. Yeah, so you can get them down in the nineteen hundred to twenty one hundred dollar range, and then they're gonna they're gonna want eight cents a mile at that at that price. So if you do eight thousand miles, if you're at nineteen hundred, you're about twenty five fifty twenty six hundred a month, which is a whole lot less than you know other payments. What is um? You have to have insurance on it, obviously, which is at a higher level, right? You have to have comp and collision. Fire and theft? No, it's not at a higher level. It's the same insurance. It's no, well, my truck's only insured for, for $55,000, right? So, I mean, my rate's got to be cheaper because of that, right? I guess. Right. You're going to look at probably a point zero four and a half to point zero six on insurance. So, what that means is we'll just call it a five point. So, if you have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar truck times it by 0 0.05 you're at seventy five hundred divide that by twelve six hundred something dollars a month six and a quarter yeah you're gonna be at a five point multiple so that that's six. where you're gonna hit that right i don't know like i said you know you're uh yeah. I just oh go ahead and grab it you want me to take off camera she's got to grab something <laughs> she don't like to be seen. She likes to grab something, she said. She waved at you, Bob. Hey, yep. Bob said he's going to send more uh, beef jerky. Oh, you guys want some more? I will. I haven't made it. You got, listen. He hasn't made I it, haven't it yet. Made it since then. You got the last batch. I gave some to my son, and I, I sent some to you. Well, make some more. You're in, you're in New York. You're rich. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to go. We got to go up to Costco. I, you know what I've been doing too? I've been playing around with dry aging beef. Well, you know what? You live on the island, so you're living in about a $3.5 million house, 
with a quarter yeah. of an acre lot. No, no, wait, wait. Let me clarify. <laughs> you. My tax is at three point five million, <laughs> and right. my acre. I live. I live on a hundred by a hundred. <laughs> no, I, I'll tell you what it is. So my house, my house is probably appraising for about five right now, which is probably a little bit overrated. And my taxes are a thousand a month, and right. I have a hundred by a hundred, three bedroom ranch. Right, and you you can go to the one side of the house, reach out the window, and your neighbor can reach out his window, and you can touch. Uh. Well, I mean, unless you're exaggerating, I mean, but we certainly could see each other. We can't touch. Well, you don't live in the brownstones. The brownstones could do that. The brownstones, yeah. I don't. I when I was a fireman, I I've been in a lot of brownstones when they were on fire, and I want no interest in in owning one. Right. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> no. No, thank you. I'll take this setup any day of the week. I'll be in control of my own house instead of letting somebody else burn me out. So I, this this thing's fluctuating. See now it's now it's going down again. The pip, yeah, it's, it's dropping. What currency are you are you playing around with? Crypt, uh, Dogecoin, crypto. Oh, all right. Yeah, I got a I got Coinbase, and I take all my profits from Robinhood, and I stick them over on Coinbase, and buy all the other actual coins. Slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady. Says Dogecoin's, you know, it's going to skyrocket up and down. It's going to be really volatile. And so you can day trade it. Right. I Listen, I have no time to day trade. I wish I did, but like between running the fuel company and trying to stay compliant in the trucking, com trucking company, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Staying compliant is hard, right? I it mean, is. my insurance just, I, I tell you what, I, I just, um, I just renewed with um, Progressive. I got the number down by um, actually paying it in full. Did they? <laughs> Save me like $3,000 a year. Right. And then on top of it. They give you a discount. They, I got a $3,000 discount, right, for paying it in full. And then on top of it, I have to take a New York State um, uh, driver safety course. And I, my agent told me that I could save another 1800 That's a lot. That's a lot. So I'm going to do it. And then I put it on my credit card. They accept credit cards, and my credit card gives me two percent cash back. So, well, you got so, like, what do you got? Like one of the Spark cards or something? Yes, I you got did. it over. I got it three booths away from the uh, one, two, three load board. That's I right. got it a couple of years ago. That's right. <laughs> right, the Spark. That's where I got it. I'm not kidding. Yeah, I was gonna fill one out when I was, um, you know, at the booth, and I went over there because you told me about it. Yeah, hey, get a Spark card. So I went over there, but I had never finished filling it out because I went back and, you know, I did a show there and stuff. And uh, But they send me stuff all the time, you know. There it is. I'll hide the number. No, show <laughs> the whole number. No, no, I can't do that. And, but wait a minute. Then flip it around because I got to see the three-digit number on the back. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll, I'll do that for you. Hey, if you show the number, it doesn't matter. If they don't have the three numbers on the back, they can't do nothing with it. Well, you're right in a way. It doesn't really matter because I get any every time there's a charge on the card, I get an e a quick email, you know. Right. And so I can just call them up and say, "Nope, I didn't do that." Yeah. And they're actually pretty, pretty good too. Like when I'm on the road and I'm getting fuel at you know one of these you know, wherever a pilot or a loves wherever I'm at a TA, a lot of times I'll get a quick text, "Hey, did you just spend you know three hundred bucks at such and such?" And I have to say yes or no, you know. It's, they're good. The card's good. And you know what? You pay it off at the end of the month, and you have no interest, and you still get your two percent. All right. So what? What Bob is talking about is this right here. Let's see if we can. This right here. Business card spark. There you go. Well, I you, have the. Uh, go the, back. Go down. You had the two percent. Yeah, I can't see it. Scroll down. Yeah, that's the one I have. This one right here. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Credit level accident, earn a five hundred dollar cash bonus once you spend forty yep. five hundred yep. the first three months. That's right. That was easy peasy. And I think there might have even been oh well, maybe not, I can't remember, but I, I think there was a deal going on at the show. And um 
it was easy to spend the forty five hundred. I mean, it was no big deal. Next thing you know, you got five hundred dollars in um, in cash bonus points. And and listen, if you buy anything on Amazon, there's a there's a in your Amazon Prime account when you go to pay, there's a little link button. It says, "Do you want to use your uh, your uh, Sparks? You know, your 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 Capital One Sparks points to pay?" And it just goes right to it. it, it, it it's great. Now you could also use that to pay your insurance. Yep, with Progressive. Now Lancer wouldn't take an insurance card if I'm not mistaken, or they wouldn't, uh, or they wouldn't um, give you a discount. I think it was. There wasn't a discount for paying it in full, and I don't, I'm not even sure if you could pay by a credit card. But Progressive allows you to pay with a credit card. So there's your two percent off of whatever rate you're paying. Even if you, even if you pay Progressive monthly, you, you get that card and you. You know, you get you're saving two percent, right? And you could take the money, you could take it back in cash, or you can just buy piece things that you need. You know. Well, yeah, because if you figure, if you're spending, let's say ten thousand dollars a month, two percent, couple hundred bucks, twenty four hundred a year. I tried to my to terminal where I buy bulk fuel from. I, I, they won't take credit cards. I asked them, Hey, do you guys take credit cards? I'll pay my, I'll pay, you know, I'm buying like, you know, uh, I don't know. It, I, let's see. Let me just check. I'll tell you right now. Hold on. And, and if you're a flyer, you can get two times the miles. Right. Yeah. I never, I didn't go with that. I just, I just basically took the money, you know, and figured if I'm going to buy tickets, I could use the money to buy the ticket. So, Let's see what happens. Fair, excellent, excellent. So what do they consider excellent? Um, never declared bankruptcy or defaulted a loan. I haven't been more than six days late on any credit card, medical bill, loan. Last year I've had loan or credit cards for three years or more, 5,000. Good credit, blah, 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 blah. 30 days later, fair credit, uh, defaulted a loan in the past five years or have limited credit history, blah, 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 blah. So there you go. Listen, I had a couple of glitches in my credit. Uh, just a couple of glitches. I still got to prove for the uh, the uh, Spark two percent. I think they gave me a twenty five thousand dollar line. So now I'm, my, I've lost my half, credit's good now, but you know, back a few years back, I had a few glitches. So I lost half that profit on that. I should have sold it when it was up one hundred twenty nine bucks. It's only up sixty bucks. That's what I'm saying. If I'd have sold it, watching it, I'd have sold it, and then I'd be right buying it down here. And that's how you make money. Yeah, you can hold so many coins. So that's that's how you make money. You keep an X amount of coins for the long run, and then you trade it on the swings up and down. You know? You know what I'm saying, Bob? Yeah, you want a good one? Yeah. I I'm I'm loaded right now with appliances. I got 36 Samsung refrigerators on my truck going to a local uh, distribution center on Monday morning. Okay. I picked it up in uh, Bethel, Pennsylvania. I got got a nice rate for it. I think it was like $1,400. It's a nice rate, but um, under 200 miles. Anyways, um, took me six hours to get loaded. <laughs> you know why? They, according to what they were telling me was the day crew had some sort of um, – dispute with like management and they all walked off the job at 12 noon yesterday at samsung <laughs> in, in bethel pennsylvania and i sat i got there at 11 30 and i sat in the door until at least 5 p.m before they even started loading me no 5 30 yeah i didn't care i mean i was tired anyway and i i had to head back over the you know back into the city so on a friday there was traffic going in so i just I just sat. I guess I'm going to get detention on it. I got to talk to the broker. Got to talk to the broker. First two hours are on the house. And then another thing credit cards do for you in certain banks is um, they'll give you your, your credit scores for free. Oh, yeah. Well, Credit Karma will too. Oh, will it? Yeah, there's no charge. You just open up and you just apply for an account with Credit Karma. Yeah, but you're right, though. They, they will. That you, you just click on it and it, you, your score is there. I mean, you got to have a credit card. I mean, if you're going to be on the road, I yeah. mean, that's just, 
No. So, so like I have I have Discover on here, and it says cash back bonus. I get cash back from them too. Um, but not Sparks as Sparks was anything though. Yeah, not that as, was the yeah, not as good as Sparks. Yeah. Here, let me let me kick on let me click on the credit score and see what this thing says. That's not bad. It's went up. I went up two points. Let me check mine. Hold on. I went up two points. I got a link to credit. Twenty eight years. I guess that helps the score. Yeah, it is. It's uh, credit history, how long you've had credit, I think. Um, payment history, derogatory remarks. Uh, uh, the amount of, oh, a big thing is, is how much credit you have available to you and how much of that credit you're using. They want you to be below 30%. I'm, so if I'm, you want, if you max yeah. that much. I'm utilizing 6%, it says. Yeah, let me see what mine is. Which will be zero percent because I'm paying that off this month, so I'll be at zero percent utilization. Yeah, let's see. Score details. I have excellent credit rating. My my credit score is down seven points um, since the last time I checked it, but that's because I just charged a couple of things on it, you know. So let me see. Look at, yeah, look at, because. Look at Wallace. He wants, he wants to say, he's like, what's your numbers? Oh, my credit card number? No, the credit score. He's like, what's your number? I don't care. You want to know my number? What does it matter? Can I say it? I don't care. Go ahead. 778. That's what I got. 778. That's uh, TransUnion. Wait, what's the other one? TransUnion is 778. And... Equifax is seven ninety nine, but my point, my, my scores are down. Huh? There you go. It, my my scores fluctuate, so like I just charged. Um, put a turbo in the truck. It was like so I charge it, you know, four thousand bucks, get percent off, and then um, I also I just ordered new seats. I got, I'm getting new leather seats for it. And I charged that. That was two grand. So all of a sudden, when they run your score, they score. If your if your utilization goes up kind of quickly, you drop you drop in points for some reason. Yeah, I'm I'm at eight oh five. I was at eight oh three. It went up two points. Yeah, but I mean, I already so I pay it before the um before it's due. Like I already paid for the the seats. I I charged it, and then a week later I made a payment. So. I'm not paying interest on it. Right. I, I'll, I'll probably go up another couple, you know, five or ten points once I pay that off this month because I'll be at zero, right. util I'm utilizing, zero utilization. My credit utilization is score details. Hold on. 15% probably? 20? Uh, I hope not. No, 7%. <laughs> 7%. Yeah, I'm at, I'm at six, but like I said, That'll be paid off this month, so I'll be back down to zero. Oh, hard inquiries is another one. So if you yeah. run around, uh, you know, applying for car loans, you're going to looking at trucks or something, and you go to Packard, and then you go to Mac, and then you go wherever. I a hard inquiry inquiries have um, problems. They, they lower your score, like right, and it takes almost two years to come off. Like I've got three inquiries from 2019 that are going to drop off soon. Yeah, see, mine's down to where it's at because of the trailers I bought, right? They hit the hard inquiries on five times. Right. That's every trailer. Every trailer they hit it. So. What trailers did you buy? Wabash? Yeah, Wabash and uh, Vanguard. Vanguard? Yeah. What did you buy? The, um, the plated? Yeah, they're all plates. Yeah. What is the... Um, I see a lot of trailers on the road. They have a high... On the outside is a high strip of aluminum on the bottom. What? That's different, right? What is that? That's the heavy duty. It's not worth getting that? Is it what? Is it worth spending the extra money to get that? Because these guys yeah. sometimes like oh, pallets in the truck. These guys are banging the heck out of the walls of the truck. Yeah, it saves a lot yeah. of wear and tear. It, it, it gives it you more stability in that wall on a, dirt, on a plate trailer. And it's also good to get the rub rail they cost it that goes down the outside. 
Oh, uh, that that thing that sticks out. It's a little yeah. bit higher up. Yeah, that Why, makes, what is, that makes all the panels more sturdy, so they don't flop in the wind. What about um, logistics post? Like closer, like I think the one the trailer I have, if I'm not mistaken, they're either 24 or 48. I think it might be 48. Logistics post, yeah, you could do them every 24, but a lot of those plate trailers standard are 48. Yeah, I don't like that because you can't sometimes you right where you want right. to put a strap, the, the loads in the way. Right. Yeah, I yeah. think if I get a trailer, I'm gonna. I'm gonna to try to get like you know a 12 on center maybe and get the high. Um, why not? Why not go a little extra heavy? I, I mean, I guess the trailer will weigh a little more, but how much more is it gonna weigh? Not much. Not a whole lot more. I have a Hyundai. I lease a Hyundai. I got a pretty good deal on it. It only costs me 450 a month plus uh, four cents a mile. Well, it's not bad full for a car. Lease. Yeah, full maintenance lease basically on the trailer. They cover everything. And as a matter of fact, when it needed to be inspected, I went and got it inspected right over here by me, and um, I just sent him the bill, and he took it off of what I owed. I thought you were talking about a Hyundai car. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> I would never be put dead in one of those things. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You, you guys had one, right? It got into a collision, and it held up nice, right? Yeah, or was it a Kia? It was a Kia Telluride, yeah. Oh, right, Telluride. We finally got it back after four months. Four months. Does, does it track straight? Yeah. All right. She's taken it back several times. Not done right. It's not right. You know, fix it. Paint didn't match? Yeah, it matched. Yeah. Do you pay a sales tax on truck purchase? No, you, well, no, no you don't. Most states you don't. You got to fill out one of those forms. Let me see. What is it? Tax know. exempt form. Yeah, let me see. That might happen. A lot of states have a, a rolling stock rule, which means. If you're it's a commercial vehicle, anything you buy, trailers, trucks, are tax free. Tax free. I forgot the name of the form. Well, hang on, let me see. I'll find it. Wallace Sober says runs run the strips lengthwise. Yeah. It's called an ST21.1. That's a, um, in New York State anyway. It's a ex uh, tax exemption. So I don't pay New York State sales tax on uh, anything I buy for the, for the Peterbilt. So Wallace, the trailer, is, right? Wallace is talking about E-Track, right? Because if you run them uh, horizontal in the trailer, it's E-Track and vertical is uh, logistics. Logist yeah. So how, my question is, is how, if you're going to run it, from front to rear, how do you uh, secure it to the wall? Like, where does it get secured? You can't, the, the walls are so thin, you can't, where you, how do you secure it? It's the same way they do the, the uh, logistics post. So what do you put, you pull out one of the rivets on that and then well, no, it, marry it's, it up? It, no, it's put in there and it's riveted on the, through the outside, just like the rip uh, like post. Yeah, I mean, my trail is the least. I don't think I'd be able to do that. Mac the trucker says, not in Indiana, got to have a DOT number to get tax exempt. Yeah, but don't you have one? I have a DOT number. Yeah, yeah. So he's, if you're in Indiana, you're good. You don't have to pay tax. Well, he's talking about, let's say a guy is leased on to a company. They don't have a DOT number. Oh, because then the DOT number would be your number, right? Because right. Because you've got it's, guys, all right, all right, all right. Maybe a contract, yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, Indiana's kind of, you know, kind of messed up. Yeah, that's not right. Yeah, what Bob said, it's not right. Well, what? Just use your DOT number. What does it matter? No one's paying the tax, wouldn't hurt you. See, now I contact this company. They make a great product. I don't think they make it no more. They don't sell it because it's not on their site to sell. Um, but it was an e-track that clipped into the logistics post. That's what you need. And that was a great deal. But I tried to get the guy to send me some. I was going to buy them. Never oh, a got sample. It. I remember that. That Throughout was a couple a, years ago. Yeah. Yeah, you had a yeah. video on it. Right. And the guy never sent him or nothing. So That's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that was great. 
but you just got to hope that all the logistic posts, the females are all like the same level all the way from front to rear, you know, I would assume they are, but man, it's best. That would be good too. If, well, you know what? I'm just going to get a trailer. I think when I, the next trailer I get, I'm going to get 24 on center. I think oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 12 on center, maybe 12. I want, I want more options. Yeah, this is um, this is the company, Exactor Track. Oh, that's way too many lights. And see this, this is what it was. Yeah, that's pretty good stuff. I like that. But you can't get them to sell them to you. Contact us, and if you go to the shop, here they are. No prices, and they don't send them. They were at the truck show back in 2017. Never, never could get them. That was the deal. Wow. Do they have a picture of how it secures to the... Um... Yeah, they're right here. See them? Right here. Oh, that's great. They clip right in. So... You can move we them. We can make those ourselves. We can make those ourselves. Yeah, you can just make them yourself. That's what they did. I mean, you know. You, you just, just buy it. Your track's expensive, but you can buy it. I got a couple of 10-footers down in the basement. Well, he, um, he, he was well that. He yeah. was selling two of these. This this is a 48 wide. This is a 24. Mm -hmm. And he was selling a pair of them for, I think they were like 60 or 70 bucks. So you wouldn't need more than a couple pairs. Because you're only going well, to use them towards the end of the trailer. That costs more than that. Right. No, they weren't, they weren't that expensive. expensive. Right. See, if you look at their gallery, that's how it was. Right. You know, so they're showing you, you could lock them in. You didn't need a whole lot of them. You could just, you, use you know. load bars. Right? Yeah. But you could use straps because you got the same... You know, the same thing as strap holes is your post. And that's where it locked in. Right. You know, you'd you know slide it up and then it'd fall right into place. I wonder if you ran into a jam with, uh, if there's a patent on. <laughs> well, they got a the patent on it. You know, they do. Well, you, you don't think they're just going to allow, allow some, right some, some guy from Canada to make a fitting and sell it without their permission, do you think? Well, no, you you could it's patent pending. So I mean, you could make it yourself. And there's nothing they could do about it. Right. You, yeah. You know. But I'm saying he must have had it. You have to in order for him because he's got he's he's utilizing their securement system, their male and their female. That's got to be patented. Right. Right. He's got patent pending on him. Yeah. Because it's so like right that there. fitting right there, that end right there, has got to be a patent on it. Yeah, that that right there is a patent. You you're know not allowed to just use that. You're not allowed to use that and market that. I don't think. No, but, but if, if you made it yourself, there's nothing they could do. And just use no, it for yourself. your own truck. Yeah, yeah. Only, but you have a website. You're trying to sell it. Maybe that's what happened to the guy. Maybe they sent them like a cease and desist letter. <laughs> no, I don't know. Because he's they're the ones that filed the patent on it, right? This wow. company. Who knows. Well, you got to get him to come on and be a sponsor on a big rig radio network. Maybe, maybe nobody bought them. I don't know. I was going to buy some because that's a great, that's a great idea. I agree. Because the freight would never, you know, go anywhere because you could, now you have E-Track. That's right. The only, the only downfall is they stick out. So if the freight was too wide, you couldn't put them in. Like a, like the water bottles, maybe you yeah. know, would you catch with a, with a skid? Would water catch on it? I know one thing. Yeah. When I get loaded with water bottles, they load me like with a like, like a robot, right? And the robot goes into my trailer first and scans the trailer to make sure it's empty. And if and like I've had like um, bungees on the like you know, I've had like uh, like my broom bungee to the wall. No good. They won't right. load me. You have to take it out. Yeah. So I mean. I would, I would only have one or two pairs, and I'd just store them right at the bunk, right? And then if you had a load, 
that was they double stacked. Right. You could say, hey, before you go to the rear of the trailer, let me stick these two in. Right. Then you could, you know, put it across. Especially if you got one of those forty-eight foot or forty-eight, you know, inch ones, the four foot. Right. Yeah. That would solve your problem when this stops in between the trailer like it does. Yep. Well, I got to go. It's time to roll. All right, man. Nice talking to you. All right. Thanks, everybody, for Be watching. Well. Yeah, we'll, we'll do this again. We'll see you. Yeah. All right. Have a good day. Later.